If you love chips and salsa, then you've got to check out my homemade salsa recipe. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This salsa will be ready in just a couple minutes, so let's get started. First off, we're gonna do just a little bit of prep before we toss everything into the food processor or blender if you're using that. I'm gonna have these tomatoes. You could also quarter them. Just remove the stem part. That's not delicious. I'm using Roma tomatoes for this. These are like reliably good, even if tomatoes aren't in season, but you could definitely use your favorite tomatoes instead. When I can get my hands on them, I love using heirloom tomatoes. All right, these are basically prepped. I'm using half of a red onion for this. It's about half of a cup. Cut it in half, remove the base, and then just give it like the quickest of chops. That's good. Your salsa needs some heat. We're gonna use two jalapeno peppers for this. Again, it's kind of up to you. These are like reliably pretty hot, but you can use very hot peppers if that's your jive. Jam, jam, jalapeno jam. Jalapeno jam's delicious, it's on the blog. Okay, we're just taking off the ribs, which have the stems and kind of like the not delicious part of the pepper. I'm filming this on a Sunday, which at our house is taco night, not Tuesday. I will have delicious fresh salsa for my tacos. I'm very excited about this. Brian, do you want to tell them what you put on your tacos? Ketchup. <laughs> Can you believe that? Let me know in the comments if you're aghast or if you think it's delicious. I'm curious. <laughs> These jalapenos are pretty spicy. I can smell it. Two jalapenos prepped. The last thing I want is a smattering of garlic. I think my recipe calls for three or four cloves. So I'm using five or six. That's how it feels. So just cut the end off, give it a smash, get the paper off. That's all you have to do, so easy. No mincing today. When I lived in LA, I used to buy elephant garlic, which has these massive cloves that made it so easy because you'd only ever need one or two for a recipe and there's less prep work, but I cannot find it here. I'm using two lines for this recipe. I love my salsa to be really acidic and just bright. Give them a roll really quickly just to release those juices and I'm gonna juice them directly into the processor. Give it a slice, it smells so good already. All right, that's all my prep except for the cilantro. I'm gonna use one full bunch. I love cilantro in this. I don't know how people eat food if they're not cilantro people. Some people naturally taste it to be soapy, like Brian. <laughs> all right, just remove the stems from your cilantro. This can get set aside. We're gonna use the leaves. It's onto the food processor. My mom's from Mexico and she and her sisters would always have fresh salsa in the house. This is like a standard red tomato salsa, but you can make so many different kinds. Let me know in the comments if there's a salsa you'd like me to show you. I think maybe tomatillo would be fun. That's one of her favorites. Hmm. So the thing about tomatoes is they are amazing in the summer, but the rest of the year, they're kind of like bleh. I like to use canned tomatoes in my salsa just because like in the winter time, it's impossible to find good tomatoes. I'm using whole tomatoes for this and I'm not gonna use the juice. I don't want the salsa to be too watery. People always think that fresh is better, which is mostly true, but for tomatoes, these are packed at the peak ripeness for tomatoes and they're also the type of tomatoes that might taste delicious but not travel well. These tomatoes have to be like, you know, packaged and hang out in the grocery store for a while. So some varieties of tomatoes have a ton of flavor but just aren't viable for being in your produce counter. That's the last of the tomatoes. Don't throw that juice away. It's delicious in like pastas and everything else. So that's for later. Now we're just gonna add the ingredients in. One thing I wanna say is if you like your salsa to be on the chunky side, you might wanna pulse everything else and then add the tomatoes last. I think I'm gonna do that today because I don't want it to be totally uniform like it's been pureed. We're starting off with the garlic and onion going right into the processor. Those jalapenos can go in too. I'm gonna to give this a really quick pulse. Head start. Juice of two limes, in you go. All the lime juice in there. The boys are obsessed with this book called Dragons Love Tacos. Um, it's about dragons not liking spicy salsa, but they do like tacos. Anyhow, <laughs> I can't wait for George and Lachlan to see this. I'm like, is it spicy? Because they like to pretend they're dragons. They don't like spicy salsa. 
Okay, that's a lot of flavor, I love it. To up the heat, I'm adding half a teaspoon of chili powder, Just sprinkle it in. One teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm also gonna add a sprinkle of salt. Just add some contrast. And a little black pepper. It's raining pepper. Now it's time to add those tomatoes in. Just plop them right in there. And we're finishing this recipe off with all that amazing cilantro. Mmm, this looks so good. Pulse one more time just until you're at the right consistency. It's up to you. And just like that, it's done. It's so easy and you're gonna love fresh homemade salsa. You can always change the flavors and make it perfect for you with no preservatives, fresh ingredients, it's delicious. Salsa's done and ready to dig in. If you like this video, check out my chicken enchiladas. I just like every delicious flavor you could imagine and so much better than anything from a jar. See you in the next video.